The wilderness inhabits dangerous creatures of all kinds, bringing destruction to these abandoned lands. But there is one above all that brings chaos. And in the midst of chaos, there is also opportunity. Today I want to teach you how to use that opportunity. Today we are going to fight the Chaos Elemental. Before we begin though, I have to warn you. The Chaos Elemental is located in the wilderness and therefore you can be attacked and killed by other players. Only bring items that you are willing to lose, because at some point you probably will. Getting to the Chaos Elemental is fairly easy and you can utilize four different ways to do so. The first is by teleporting with the wilderness levers that are located in Edgeville and RD. When pressed, you will be teleported to the deserted keep located west of the Chaos Elemental. You could also teleport yourself to the Wilderness Lodestone and then run to the obelisk southeast of you. The obelisk is able to teleport you to one of the others at random, so it may take you some time before arriving at the northeastern one. Unless, of course, you have completed the Hard Wilderness Diary, which will allow you to choose your destination. All high-level players who have at least level 90 in magic and access to the engine spellbook can use the Anakaral Teleport that will bring the user to the ruins just south of the Chaos Elemental. And last but not least, you could, of course, simply walk there. This is probably the safest, but also the slowest way of getting to the boss. Personally, I prefer method number one. It's pretty fast and so far I had no problems with peak chaos. Whichever method you will use, I would advise you to go on a low populated world, as it will improve your chance of survival. Speaking of survival, there are a few things you should know about escaping player killers. If you attack another player in the wilderness, you will get skulled, meaning a skull will appear over your head and if you die, you will lose all of your items. This also means that when another player attacks you, they are the ones getting skulled. However, there are a couple of ways to trick you into becoming Skald even if this was not your intention. This topic could be a video on its own, so I will just give you some quick tips on how to stay safe out there. First, turn Auto Retaliate off. Not only will this make escaping easier, but it also prevents you from accidentally responding to other players attacks. Secondly, turn off Accept Aid. It can be abused by other players to drain your prayer points and therefore disabling your protect item prayer. While we're at it, use the protect item prayer as it will protect one additional item on death. Additionally, eating a fury shark also grants you a protection buff that will protect one item on death for up to one minute after being eaten. In total, combining the protection prayer and fury shark will allow an unscarred player to keep five items on death. But what should you do if you get attacked? Well, if you didn't get teleblocked, you can use the obelisk I mentioned earlier to teleport you to a depth of the wilderness where you can use an emergency teleport. Another escape route opens up if you've completed the Spirit of Summer quest. Jenica's Ring, a quest reward, allows you to travel to the spirit realm at certain locations. One of these locations can be found northwest of the Chaos Elemental at the Magic Axe Hut. If teleblocked, however, you could try to run into the rogue's castle and strip your persecutors off, followed by logging out as soon as you can. This requires you to be out of combat for at least 10 seconds. As far as the requirements go, the Chaos Elemental is a fairly easy boss, so level 60 plus combat stats and equipment should be sufficient. Using range or magic will make the fight a bit easier though. The Chaos Elemental possesses the ability to teleport you around and being able to hit it from afar will result in a lot less running and a lot more attacking. As always, you'll find links to the RuneScape wiki in the video description below, which also includes ranged and melee gear setups. If you want to risk the lowest amount of money possible, I would recommend you to use a range setup with a Dragonhide armor set such as the Blue or Royal Dragonhide, as they are always pretty cheap. A full Royal Dragonhide armor set, for example, costs about 30,000 GP. I would also advise you to use a two-handed weapon instead of two one-handed weapons, as you will only need to protect one item on death instead of two. In case you prefer using magic, something like the Lunar Armor set or better will do just fine, but comes at a higher risk value. 
Before you head into the wilderness, you can also click on the skull icon in your equipment interface to see the items you would lose on death. Ask yourself if you'd be okay with that. Your inventory should include a couple of prayer and stat boosting potions, as well as food and, if you want to, an emergency teleport, as well as a fury shark. You should also consider that the chaos elemental is able to remove equipped items and put them in the player's inventory. If this is already full, nothing will happen. So in order to keep it filled, you could use food like pizza or pies and bring a beast of burden to refill your inventory if necessary. After all the precautions and preparations we took, the fight itself is surprisingly easy. Neither does the Chaos Elemental have difficult mechanics, nor does he have an enormous life pool. With only a little over 70,000 HP, you should be able to kill it fairly quick. His standard attack shoots an orb at the player that will deal either melee, ranged or magic damage. It is not possible to tell which of the combat styles is going to hit you, so it's generally advised to pray against magic as this style has the highest accuracy. Occasionally, the Chaos Elemental will also use one of its special attacks. The first one is a teleport, where it will randomly teleport the player around while he is within a 20 square radius around the Chaos Elemental. This attack doesn't pose any direct threat and is just supposed to confuse the player. With the other special ability, he will bring madness up on the player, forcing him to unequip his main hand weapon as well as up to three other equipped items. If the player's inventory is full, however, this attack will not do anything. Therefore, you should always have a full inventory, refilling food from your beast of burden and the elemental's drops alike. Moving on to the best part of every boss fight, the drops. The Chaos Elemental's drops mainly consist of food, runes, herbs and seeds. But there are also more valuable drops, like a dragon two-handed sword for example, brawling gloves or ancient artifacts. In addition, the boss also has a 1 in 128 chance to roll on the Ancient Warriors drop table that is also accessible by Revenants. Each piece of gear on this table has a 1 in 225 chance of getting chosen after rolling on this table. This means that if you are hunting for a specific piece of ancient gear, there is only a chance of 1 in 28,800 of getting it. This includes high value items like the Statue's Warhammer or Serial Equipment. I wish you the best of luck avoiding those PKers. And if this video helped you learn anything new, please consider leaving a like. It really makes a difference. If there is anything else RuneScape related I can help you with or you would like to see a video or a guide on, let me know in the comment section below. For now, good luck and farewell.